Let us go into the house of the Lord. Somebody say, bless the Lord, Lord. oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Does anybody know that he is worthy to be praised? Amen. You know, I don't care if, the, if it's dark outside, if the, if the rain comes, I don't care if it snows. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Some announcements we have as we prepare to start our service. Uh, the congregational listening, uh, Congregational listening meeting has been postponed due to the administrative commission, and as soon as we have the approval to move forward, uh, we will announce a new date for that because we want to be sure everybody's brought up to date. Um, we still have our bracelets that are available for any of our first-time visitors and members. Everybody gets one for free, and after that, they're $2 a bracelet. We invite you to join Contemporary uh, Dance Company, Dayton uh, DCDC, in a letter writing campaign to have dance educator, businesswoman, visionary, civil rights trailblazer, wife and mother Geraldine Blunden honored on a USPS stamp. The address is here to send the letter to and the letter is in your announcements. What is not in your announcements is on this Thursday at five, I believe 5.30 to seven, we're, um, we are hosting, not, we're not doing it, but we are allowing it to be hosted here, a meet the candidates for the city, the, those that are running for city commission, so you have an opportunity to speak with the different people that are running and see what sort of ideas and platform they're running under, because everybody needs to be informed to vote. Can anybody say vote? Vote. 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 The primary is just as important as when we have our elections in November because we need to understand a lot of things get snuck through on the primaries. You know, rights get taken away and all kinds of stuff happen in the primary. So be sure that you are voting every opportunity you get a chance and you also need to know who and what you're voting for. Our foot washing service that was postponed from Paul's Palm Sunday will be May, uh, first Sunday in May, May 7th. And we invite you to be a part of that. Our Hispanic, uh, Bilingual Spanish and English Bible study is on hold as we look for the best time and date that's going to work for everyone. If you're visiting with us today and you need Spanish translation, we have headsets. Brother George Brown, who does that for us, um, please let one of the ushers know if you need a headset. The Omega CDC Food Outreach Program provides prepared meals and will deliver them to individuals and families. If you or someone you know needs food, um, please reach out to Ebony Stroud. Her phone number is listed here in the announcements. Um, if you're online and don't get them, then we uh, encourage you to call the office. Um, something that we need to, um, need to bring up because it's been coming up more often than not, and we want to be sure that people understand what it means to be a church. It says, attention, our church does not allow personal solicitors of members personal should be solicitations of members. If you are in need of help or resources, please let an usher know following the end of service. Um, a lot of times, we, because we say we want to help people, we get confused about when and how we're supposed to do that. When we come to church we come, on Sunday morning, we come to worship and praise the Lord. Can anybody say amen? amen? That's what we come to do. If you come into the house of the Lord, come ready to praise the Lord. Now, as part of our ministry, each and every one of us, whether we're a church or not, if we can help someone um, during the week, if you need, we can get you to different um, uh, resources, and we can even help you ourselves. And what we won't let you do is leave hungry. We keep food in our in our small pantry, so if you need something like that after church, please let an usher know. But please do not, do not solicit any members during worship. Also, College Hill has a Facebook page. As many people know, we invite you to go out and like things and share things because that boosts up our, our ratings so that people will see it. Uh, we have dance rehearsal and, and praise team and choir rehearsals that are listed. Um, we also have uh, uh, 
Brother Anthony, Anthony Washington, who is incarcerated right now and would enjoy to hear encouragement and cards from people. So if you're willing to write with him and if you have any concerns about the return address, use the return address of College Hill and we'll be sure that the letter gets back to you if he writes back. Um, let's see. Time, uh, the, there should be at your pews pieces of paper for testimony and prayer requests. When we get to that, we would like to read those off rather than spend a lot of time having people stand up. So we invite you to fill out the testimonies and prayer requests if you have those. Um, we also have uh, effective communication strategies and understanding and responding to dementia-related behaviors. That's at Covenant Presbyterian Church on May 6th from 1 to 3 p.m. If you know of someone or even think you're, you yourself might be dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's, that would be an important event to go to. We're still looking for van drivers. And also, um, once a month I said that I would do a two-way communication through sermons. I'm still waiting to hear back from people as to things that you would like to um, hear about. Also, you should have in your announcements a uh, large piece of paper that looks like this. This coming um, Saturday, Dayton Unites for Human Rights. We're having a community assembly with the UN Permanent Forum on People of African Descent. We invite you to join us for discussion about the experiences and impacts of education, health care. Somebody say health care. Health care. Housing, food, policing, and incarceration on black people in Dayton, Ohio, and the surrounding areas. That will be this Saturday from 10 to 12 p.m. at Omega Baptist Church and the Clergy Com Community Coalition, of which I am the president and various members are members of that group, are still fighting for a new hospital um, in Northwest Dayton. So let us continue to be in prayer about that. Is there anything that I've forgotten to lift up? If not, then now let us open our service and prepare to worship the Lord. Welcome to the joyful, we rejoice with you. Welcome to the tired and weary, come and take your rest. Welcome to the lonely and left out, may you find community among us. Son bienvenidos todos los que están gozosos, nos regocijamos con ustedes. Son bienvenidos todos los que están cansados, vengan, descansen en Dios. Son bienvenidos todos los que se sienten solitarios y abandonados. Deseamos que se sientan acompañados, que se sientan parte de nosotros en esta comunidad. Welcome to the foreigner, to the stranger, to the refugee. May you find safety here. Welcome to every nation, every race, every orientation, every identity. May you find hospitality here, for the God who delights in all of creation is in our midst. Son bienvenidos todos los extranjeros, los refugiados. Deseamos que se encuentren en seguridad en este lugar donde habita nuestro gran Dios. Son bienvenidos los que llegan de cualquier nación, raza, orientación, identidad. Deseamos que puedan ser sentirse parte de nuestra hospitalidad porque el Dios que ama toda su creación está entre nosotros. Amen. College Hill is a multiracial and multicultural family of faith which welcomes diversity in our worship, in our ministry and in all the world. We hope you find something in our prayers and praise in our music or ministry that makes you feel a part of our, fam our family and most of all of God's family. All are welcome here. Amen. College Hill es una familia multicultu multicultural de fe que acoge la diversidad en nuestra adoración, en nuestro ministerio, en todo el mundo. Esperamos que, se encuentre, que encuentren algo en nuestras oraciones y alabanzas, en nuestra música o en ministerio, que los haga sentir parte de esta familia. Somos la familia de Dios. Todos sean bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Amen. Won't you pray with me? Dear and gracious Lord, you have so much to show us and to tell us things that no human eyes have seen and no human ears have heard. 
things that you have prepared for those whom you love. Mighty God, your promises are like shelter in a storm to us and to our children, to all those far and near, to everyone who hears your call. And God, we know that you can reach all people in all places. Oh, that we might have the mind of Christ, that we may know and understand your truth and the heart of Christ, that we might show kindness, mercy, and grace. Lord, as we gather here today and each day of our lives, we wait as empty vessels, ready to be filled to overflowing with your living water as you reveal your love for us through Jesus Christ and we share it with others. Help us not to be selfish about all that you have given us, that we will share with everyone the way you have shared with us, that we might forgive others as you have forgiven us, and that we will be lovers of justice and equity, generosity, kindness, and love because you've never been selfish with us. Go with us as we go throughout this service, Lord, that every word that is spoken, every song that is sung, every prayer that is prayed might glorify you. And Lord, we pray that every time we open our mouths and every time we meet someone, Somebody sees Jesus in us. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say amen. Amen. Won't you join us for praise and worship, which starts with a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not here for a performance. So, Lord, so we ask that you join with us as we praise and worship the Lord together. Good morning, College Hill. Buenos dias. How are you? It's good to see you. Isn't it a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Isn't it a blessing to have breath in our lungs, to have our heart beating, even when we're not even thinking about it, to have God's presence in here with us right now? We're just so thankful. And you know, sometimes I feel like I need a reminder that I can't do this life by myself. When things are getting difficult, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just don't know what to do, what's going on, I feel so overwhelmed. It's because I'm trying to do it all myself, I'm trying to carry everything myself, I'm trying to do everything all on my own with my own strength and not relying and depending on God. That's what he tells us to do. He tells us to lay our burdens at his feet, he tells us to pray, he tells us that he's, he'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll take the war for us and he'll give us that victory, but we need to be calling on God. We need to be praying. We need to be reading his word. We need to be strengthening ourselves with his spirit and not relying on ourselves. And as we're singing this song, I need thee, oh, I need thee. It's asking God, communicating with God, like, God, I need you. I know that I need you. I cannot do this without you. And I'm so thankful that you're here with me. Invite the Holy Spirit into your heart. Invite the Holy Spirit into this service. Invite the Holy Spirit into your lives. Don't just let this be me singing this. Think it, sing it, whatever. Say it out to God right now, inviting the Holy Spirit to be with you.
me, Lord, I come. I leave it all to you, Lord, I come. When I have no other words to say, I come to Thank you, Jesus. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for his spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love and your strength and your comfort and your peace, God. We can't get it from anywhere else and from no one else, God, but you. Thank you. Thank you that when we call on you in our time of need, you are right there with us, God. We just thank you. When no one else is there, God, you're there, and we thank you. Thank you so, so much for everything, God, everything that you are. Before you even do anything, we can thank you just for who you are. But, God, you don't stop there, and you keep blessing us, 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 and we just have to say, thank you, God. Thank you. We need you. We thank you. Good morning, College Hill. Good morning. The Holy Spirit is in residence in this temple this morning. It is felt. It is here. All we have to do is be reassured and praise God that we rest in God's loving arms. This morning's Old Testament scripture is taken from Psalm 116, 1 through 4, and 12 through 19. And at this time, we invite all in the congregation who are able to please stand in honor of the reading of God's message to us this morning. I love the Lord. Did you hear that, church? I love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? Yes. All right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's praise God. I love the Lord, too. Because he has heard my voice, and I'm sure yours, too, in our supplications. Because God inclined his ear to all of us. Therefore... We will call on God as long as we live. The snares of death encompass us. The pangs of shul laid hold on us. We suffered distress and anguish. Then called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, we pray, save our lives. What shall we return to the Lord for all the bounty to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. And we'll pay our vows to no one else but the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death 
of the faithful ones. Oh, Lord, we are your servants. We are your servants, the children of your serving maid. You have loosened all bonds. We will suffer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. We will pay our vows to the Lord in the presence of all people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, College Hill. Give God the praise and the reassurance that God is working with us and through us through the valley of challenge. We walk not alone. As you're seated, you are reminded this is the word, this is the word of God for the people of God. Does anybody believe it? Say, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. With that, we have, have an opportunity to greet one another in Christ. As we prepare to do that, we want to um, be sure that we acknowledge any visitors that might be present here today, any first-time visitors or people who have been away for a while that would like to be recognized. I know there's at least one of the latter category, somebody who's been away for a while that we want to give a chance to say hello again. Hello, College Hill family. Hello. It feels good to be back. My name is Bernita Pulliam, and I've been, a, I've been away for a while, but I'm glad to be back and worshiping with you guys and with my family. So thank you, and that's all I would say. Amen. 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 Welcome, Amen. Amen. Welcome back. You can never be gone so long that you won't be welcome back. Thank you. Anyone else want to be recognized? All right. Then with that, uh, we just want to take this opportunity to greet one another, and we do it in a way that's going to leave somebody with a blessing. In English, we say, the peace of Christ be with you. Or you can say in Spanish. La paz de Cristo esté con todos vosotros. <laughs> she went quick. La paz de Cristo esté, esté contigo. Um, and she said, you said esté con todos, no, con todos nosotros. nosotros, everyone. Todos. All right, amen. So just give those peace signs, bump somebody's elbow, wave, say hello, wave to the cameras because we're not worshiping by ourselves. Amen, amen. Smile at somebody, let them know you're happy to see them. That might be the only smile they get today. Amen. All right, with that, we want to prepare for our offerings to give back to God just a little of what he has blessed us with. In the midst of famine... Joseph shared generously with his brothers. He gave them not just food, but an amazing forgiveness. You know, sometimes we can give money before we can give out of our hearts. You and I have received so much from God, food for our bodies, clothes on our backs, forgiveness for our sins, to heal our spirits and our lives, new life and new life abundantly. So we come this moment in our worship when we give back to God just a portion of what we've received, not because he needs it, but to express our own amazement and gratitude at everything that God has done and is doing in our lives. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. For those that are present, we ask that you prepare your offering now. For those that are worshiping online after the service, you may send it directly to, 15, to College Hill Church, 1547 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45406. Or you can even give electronically here or at home through our Faith Life app. <clears throat> there are three different ways to give. You can go to faithlife, F-A-I-T-H-L-I-F-E dot com and search for College Hill. Or you can text the word GIVE in the amount to 937-230-6530. Or you can download the app and search for College Hill and verify the address of 1547 Philadelphia Drive. But regardless of how you give, we thank you for your faithfulness and support of this church, but most of all in thanksgiving to God. And as we prepare to worship the Lord as we praise him, we turn you over to the directions of the ushers. And I understand that Sister Deborah is going to take the young ones. And then Sister Judy is taking the older ones. Please raise your hand. Let them know 
because at this time uh, we'll excuse you um, after the offering or whenever they, whenever you see them leave, that's when you want to move. So follow who you need to go with. All right, let's praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless your name. 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 Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. There's a reason why the word says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Because God has been so good to us, better than we could even be to ourselves. So let us bless and glorify him in all that we do. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give, to be used for ministry that you didn't have to involve us in, but you do it anyway. That you don't want to just be a God who sits high and looks low, but you want to move in and through each and every one of us every day of our lives. So continue to use us, Lord, and help us to offer our gifts freely, financially, but also from our hearts, in our words, and in our deeds. Let us not be selfish with ourselves because you have never been selfish with us. Bless these gifts that have been given and all of the givers and those who wanted to give. And Lord, let it be multiplied to be enough for everything that you need us to do, because we know that you are a God who has promised you will supply all of our needs. Let us trust you and believe in that and watch what you do. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say amen. 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 As they prepare for um, the word there will have one more song and I just realized I didn't let AV know the scripture for today if it's not too late it will come from John 21 verses 1 through 14 Let's let the Holy Spirit have its way. Open your minds, open your hearts. Just let the Spirit of God fill this place in our souls.
I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Ooh. Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come. tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Ooh. Oh. 
Hearing that song makes me want to preach about the Holy Spirit because we have a habit of thinking of thinking of God as someplace other than where we are thinking that somehow you've got to do something special to bring the Holy Spirit does anybody know that the Holy Spirit is inside each and every one of us if we believe in Christ and God and Jesus as the Son of God the Holy Spirit is gifted to each and every one of us but God is they say omnipresent in all places at all times, which means even though he's inside of me and he's, in, he's inside of Sister Tyshana and Brother Jose and Brother James and Sister Ethel and each and every one of us, the Holy Spirit, and I say he, I should say they, the Spirit of God is not neither male nor female. God is God. Amen. Come on now, God is God. Never let he make you think that somehow God is not part of each and every one of us. That's, that's, a, that's a human construct that we have to have male and female. But God is they. And God is present everywhere. But when we invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of us, we welcome the Holy Spirit into our worship. We welcome the Holy Spirit into our family. We welcome the Holy Spirit into our politics. We welcome the Holy Spirit into our jobs. Then we are invoking the power of God to do things that we can't do by ourselves. So that's what we mean when we say, come Holy Spirit. We already know that we've got the Spirit of God within us, but we, we're asking for the power to take us over, to show us things that we wouldn't see on our own, to see the glory of God. And when you gather people together, it's like if, if it was completely dark in here and you, the more candles that you burn, the, the brighter it would get. That's what we say when we say, come Holy Spirit. It's not that there's no light, but bring us more light. Bring us more light than we can handle. Bring us more goodness than we've ever seen. Bring us wisdom unlike we've ever known. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And anything and anybody who doesn't welcome you, that's all right because we know that darkness is chased away by light. So you know, never have to worry when you, know, when you call on the name of Jesus and when you trust God because no matter what's coming against you, as long as God is there, everything will be all right. Amen. Can anybody say amen? amen. I don't know if I gave A.V. enough time to bring it up. Oh, look at that. See, that's what I'm talking about. They are so efficient even when I'm not. That's what grace is. When you don't do what you're supposed to, it still happens the way that it was supposed to anyway. So okay. thank God for grace and for the A.V. All right, so with that, I invite you to stand for the reading of God's holy word. We're going to stay in the Gospel of St. John. Dr. Williams, would you hand, hand me my glasses? So I don't start making up words. Thus saith Pastor Worthen. I'm not trying to do that. Today's sermonic scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. And we were, we've been in the Gospel of John for a while, and this is yet another passage following Easter Sunday morning. Hear now a word from the Lord. Now, I do need to say I'm reading for the NIV, and I'm going to say they're reading, they're, they have up here what I would normally preach from, which is the NRSV. And you're going to see why I picked the NIV, so I don't have to explain some of the things that the NRSV has in there. So it's going to read a little different. The word says, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, 
Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Then Simon Peter told them, I'm going out to fish. And they said, well, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Tell somebody I got nothing. But it doesn't have to stay that way. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you say, I'm not going to say I just got nothing. I'm going to claim the rest of it. Verse 4 begins early in the morning. See, that's when things change. Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them saying, friends, haven't you caught any fish? No, they answered, because I was figuring they were pouting, they were upset. No, I, no, we don't have any fish. Hungry, you know how we get when we're hangry, right? We get angry, hungry, yeah, yeah, you can get that on the way home. But then Jesus said, he said, throw out your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish that they caught. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, I love the way he says that, like he didn't love any of the other ones. But the disciple whom Jesus loved, because we're, this, he's talking about himself. This is the gospel of John, so he took some creative license, and he's, you know, doing a little bit about himself. He said that the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, you know how Peter could be. He wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off. And he jumped into the water. Now the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards out. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Nothing like when, when, when something's cooking, right? You come home and you're hungry. And they've been out all night. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So here comes Simon again. Simon Peter climbed back into the boat, dragged the net ashore, right? It's all full of large fish. It says 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have your breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. So Jesus came and he took the bread and he gave it to them and he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples, not including the women, after he was raised from the dead. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and proclaiming of his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word is like food to our souls. It's light in the darkness. It's rest and strength for those who are tired. It's courage when we feel afraid. It's confidence when people are telling us we're not worthy. It's kindness when a lot of people share hate. It's patience when we've got to wait for a while. And it's wisdom when we don't know what to do. But most of all, it's love. No matter what you do, it's always covered in love. So, Lord, we ask that you just wrap your arms around us right now. As we go to this preaching moment, open our ears, but most of all, our hearts. And help us not just to be hearers of the word, but doers also. And, Lord, use me. Hide me behind your cross. 
that your word and no other goes forth. And everything is done to your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And let the church say, amen. Amen. So when I looked at this scripture, there's so much there. And I had every intention on covering all of it, but I got stuck right there at the beginning. Right at, you never, you ever been on your program and then God says, no, we're going to do this. And you keep wanting to go this way. And he's like, nope, we're going to go over here and do this. So I suspect there's going to be a part two because there's a lot of stuff in this scripture that I'm not going to talk about today. I don't know that part two is going to be next week because I think we've got something else that, we're, that the Lord's already given me. But there's a lot more. We're going to come back to this. But for now, I just want you to get the blessings that are already there that God has given me. Now, as I told you, according to the NIV translation of the Bible, and I think to the, to the NRSV, this narrative that we just heard begins by saying afterward. Afterward. And then the King James Version starts this passage by saying, after these things. Right? So chapter 21 of John begins by referring to some stuff that has already occurred. It is a continuation of a, a larger story. It's part two or, or three of a series that have already happened. Now, the question is, what were those things? Well, chapter 20 starts out all about Easter Sunday morning. In the morning, we already know that the women went to the tomb and they found it empty. And then they went and told the disciples, right? We know that story. We've heard it over and over again. And then the disciples came running to verify the, the women's story. And then after everyone had left, Jesus appeared just to Mary Magdalene. And then she goes and tells the disciples the good news that Jesus was not MIA, just missing in action. But Jesus had, in fact, risen and was alive and well. Right? All right. That's a reason to shout right there. And see, then we talked about this last week. Then Jesus suddenly appeared later on in the day to many of the disciples who were hidden away because they were afraid the same thing that happened to Jesus might happen to them. You ever cowered away from saying something or doing something because you saw somebody else get beat? You're like, I ain't going to say nothing. Somebody else got embarrassed. Like, okay, I'm just stand back. I'm not going to say anything. If it happened to them, they're going to come after me next. So he, Jesus appeared to them, and he, we know that he talked about them having peace and about forgiveness. And then one of the disciples, Thomas, he wasn't present when Jesus appeared to the disciples. So he did not believe their story either. He said it wasn't enough for somebody else to tell him about Jesus. He had to see him for himself. Is there anybody else like that? You don't believe what just anybody said. You're like, you want me to believe it? Prove it, right? You know, there's nothing like firsthand knowledge and experience because some things are just so important that you cannot just trust somebody else's word because, you know, we got a habit of exaggerating sometimes. Any fishermen out here, you know, the fish was this big, and by the time you get done telling it was this big? Yeah, whenever somebody wasn't there, the story becomes more and more and more. So, so, so he just couldn't believe it, and especially this sort of story, Jesus, the Jesus that I didn't see it, but I heard, you know, because he ran away, right? I heard about everything that Jesus went through. I heard that he was buried. I heard that he died. I, I heard he was put behind a tomb. There's no way I can believe that unless I see him for myself. I, I, I just won't believe it. And so we, we as people of faith, even though we serve a God who can do impossible things, have trouble believing that God will do what he says that he will do. You might not be able to say amen other than the back, but the rest of us should be saying amen. Ask Noah. I bet he would 
he would have invited more people onto the ark other than just his family if there were some folk who believed that the flood was really going to come. That's why they didn't get to go. Nobody believed what God would do because God only told Noah and nobody else could stand on faith. Think about it. Maybe Pharaoh would have let the Hebrews, Hebrews go a lot earlier. Come on. If, 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 and he wouldn't have chased them through the Red, the Red Sea if he had his own burning bush experience. If Pharaoh knew what God could do, surely he wouldn't have put his life in danger by chasing them into some water that was going to drown him. Wouldn't it be easier if God or Jesus just simply appeared to you and me and said, it's me, it's me, God, and this is what I need you to do. You know that's what we want, right? It's me, God, and I'm telling you, go quit your job. Move to another state. Start your own business. Attend this church or don't. Do this ministry or that. We think it would be so easy if God would just speak to us and surely the majority, if not all of us, would do whatever God wanted if we could just be sure that it was God talking to us, right? Who's going to say no if God comes directly to you and tells you what to do? Well, I would say wrong. Because as the disciples bumbled and fumbled around over and over again, and they knew Jesus, even they had trouble doing what Jesus said. And they, the disciples, they were his boys. They were his crew, supposedly his ride or die disciples. But they had already shown that they couldn't follow instructions. They couldn't be counted on when the chips were down. The disciples were afraid when storms came onto the boat, even though Jesus was right there with them. Peter could only walk on water for a moment because his fear of the water was greater than his faith in the Lord. The disciples couldn't even stay awake for an hour to pray for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he needed them the most. That is the only time that I can think of that Jesus ever said, I need your help. And they couldn't even do that. The whole time that the disciples were with Jesus, the disciples had trouble following his teachings basically most of the time. Jesus had to explain things in parables and, and, and teach them over and over again just so they would get it, yet and still by the time Jesus was crucified, they still didn't get it. Because if they had, they would have known that he was going to rise again. So apparently, we can't even be counted on to do what God asks when God's standing right in front of us. The disciple Thomas was labeled Doubting Thomas. Rightfully so. But there was also a whole lot of doubting and falling short by various disciples. Can anybody say amen? Because see, it's easier to say amen when it's somebody else than it is you. So you need to say amen about them. But as soon as you say amen about them, when, say, when you point your finger at somebody, you got four fingers pointing back or three. I never figured out how that works. But nonetheless, <laughs> three pointing back at you. And the thumbs just, it, it's, it's Canada. It's staying out of it. Okay, okay. So never think, though, that if you don't hear from God directly from his voice, that the same, you know, the, some people will act like they hear from God all the time, and uh, they claim that they'll have these experiences with God, and you think that you don't hear God like that. Never think that you don't have strong faith. In fact, you could have stronger faith. If you really think about it, for even though Jesus did not appear to Thomas, to, Jesus did appear to Thomas to prove that he in, fa in fact had risen, Jesus then he chastised Thomas. See, Thomas was having a crisis of faith, so Jesus appeared to him. So he's like, okay, God showed up. But he said, that's not the blessing because he said to Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? Yet, blessed are those who have not yet seen Yet they come to believe. 
That means when you haven't seen God, when you don't hear from him directly like other folk claim that they do, when you're just stepping out on faith just to be stepping out because you're trusting and believing in God, you actually have more faith than someone who has heard from God directly because they got that voice. You have to go just on the filling and trust and belief in the promises of God. For Romans 10 and 17 tells us, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, this is one of the primary ways that God talks to us, by reading and hearing his word. Never say that God is not speaking to you because if you read the Bible, God will speak to you in your stuff. If you want to know what God is saying to you, all you have to do is read. If you have doubts, read. If you're feeling stressed or confused, read. If you don't know what to do next, read. If people are coming against you, read. If you don't know if you're going to make it another day, read. When the doctor gives you bad news, read. When you catch a case, read. When you have problems, read. But, tell somebody but. but. You got to watch out for those buts. When you find reading the Bible confusing, because sometimes scripture can, scripture can be too hard to follow, amen? amen? Especially if you're reading the, the King James with all of the these and the thous and the shalls and the shall nots, right? But even in the, in the plain speak, when you get to Numbers and Ecclesiastes and Revelation, it can get complicated. And a lot of God's word was written over 2,000 years ago in languages that most of us have never seen or heard. So, of course, it can sometimes be hard to navigate scripture and comprehend it. Don't be embarrassed about that. It wasn't written in English. It's been translated over and over again. And there's several different books with several different kinds of stories and literature in it. You have to learn how to read and comprehend the Bible for yourself. So until you do that, and even after you do that, when you need some direction past what you read, God gave us something called preachers. Because sometimes, sometimes we need to hear God's word related to us in a way that we can understand. Say, make it plain, preacher. And we need it to be relevant, right, to, to, to the things that's going on in our own lives, in our own situations. That's why I talk about stuff that's going on in the world or in our church or in our families and in our personal and professional lives. Because not only do we need to hear God's word, but we need to understand how to apply God's word in our lives. And if a preacher is too busy trying to entertain you or impress you with their intelligence, that they sound good, but you don't learn anything new about how to live, if you're not getting some new revelations that are going to help you in your daily walk, then it's your fault for continuing to listen to them week after week. But I digress. Well, let me just say, if it ever gets to the point, I don't care what church you're in, I don't care how famous they are, I don't care how many degrees they have behind their name or how many hoops they can make, if you are not getting fed week after week, take your butt someplace else and go where you're going to get the word of God because anything else is not going to bless you. You need stuff that's going to keep you through the week. We can't even make it Sunday to Sunday half the time. You got to get a word that's going to feed you and help you as you deal with the problems of life. And so I, I, I brought all of this up because of the way that John chapter 21 begins and John chapter 20 ends. See, Jesus appeared to the women and the male disciples so that they could tell the story so that we could read it and hear it later, and we too would come to believe. Jesus had to appear to somebody so that they could tell somebody else and somebody else, and they would write it down. And how do I know that? Because chapter 20 ends by saying, and a lot of us need to know this, 
everything Jesus did is not in the Bible. Verse 30 of John says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. That's why they wrote it down, so that you would know who Jesus was and there would be no mistake that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. And then it says, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Yeah, somebody should have said, yeah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, a lot more happened with Jesus in his three to three and a half years of ministry than is recorded in the Bible. This is just some of it. They couldn't capture everything that he did in one book or one gospel. Yet there's enough here. There's enough here. There's enough here. I'm going to keep saying it until you get it. There's enough here. You don't know everything that he did. You don't know everything that he's capable of. Everybody might not agree on how things went, but there's enough here for anyone who has some mustard seed type faith to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God who loved us so much that he went willingly to the cross for our sins. And if you can believe that, then you should be able to believe that he also rose again so that we could have new life. That's the whole point. That's why they wrote it down. That's why they tell the story. That's why they say it's the greatest story ever told because there's nothing else you can hear that will bless you other than what Jesus has done for all of us. But see, God knows how hard-headed, stiff-necked, in doubting his people can be. That's why chapter 21 begins by saying afterwards. After Jesus had done all of these things, this is what happened next. After everything that Jesus had done, then he disappeared again. He went away. And the disciples, they didn't know what to do but wait. And we as humans, us in the flesh, even with faith, even with prayer, even in our saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, Spirit, whatever you want to call it, us people of faith have trouble waiting. I'm going to pause right there and let you think about it. What you've done in your own life, right? Right? How you shout on Sunday and you cussing somebody out by Monday. How you believe God could do all things and then you got that bill on Tuesday or God forbid you filled out your taxes and found out that you owed money rather than was getting a refund. And next thing you know, like, God, how am I going to make it? I don't know what I'm going to do. How well can you wait before you begin to doubt? Or worse yet, begin to do your own thing because God is taking too long to show up again. You know we're just like Sarah. We, we, we think God promised me a baby, but now I'm getting even older than when he said it, and I'm not getting any younger, and certainly my husband isn't, and he hasn't done it yet, so I must go do it myself. I'm going to make my own miracle. I've got to make my own stuff happen. I'll have my husband sleep with our servant. But, but we know it's not going to work out because when you do stuff on your own rather than wait on the Lord, I don't care how much energy you put into it, it's not going to yield what God can do for you if you just trust and wait on him. But, you know, we still do the same thing. We'll say God said he was going to fix it. But I'm still in my mess. We call our girlfriends and our guy friends and we want to moan and complain. God said that he'd get me a new job, but I'm still in this job that I hate with a supervisor that hates me with a bunch of co-workers that get on my nerves. God said that I would get married, but I'm still single. So rather than wait for Mr. Right, I'll settle for Mr. Right now, right? 
Yeah, I stepped on somebody's toes for sure now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm, yeah, yeah, some of y'all laughing. I'm about to get to yours too. <laughs> God said he would get me out of debt, out of debt, but I'm still so poor I can hardly pay attention. God said he was going to deliver me, but he's taking too long to show up. He said everything was going to be all right, but all I can see is problems, and that's where the disciples were. Even after all that Jesus has done, the word says afterwards. After these things, Jesus appeared again. Now, the word doesn't say this explicitly. That's why it helps to have a preacher. Sometimes we miss it on our own. So I would submit to you that Jesus appeared yet again. Because he knew that the disciples still didn't get it. They've known the Lord all your life, but you still don't get it. Been in church week after week, but you still don't get it. Sitting on the committees, chairing stuff up, but you still don't get it. Carrying your Bible around, highlighted in three different colors, you still don't get it. <laughs> See, I told you I can get to one of you pretty soon. How do I know? Because the word says it happened like this. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, and the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. And Simon Peter told them, I'm going out to fish. And they said, we'll go with you. Followers, right? After Jesus had appeared to the disciples, they had seen the risen Lord for themselves and they had been given promises and directions by him already. They had been called to a higher service for the Lord and once Jesus disappeared and day after day crept by, you know, we don't know if it was one day or ten, but their minds began to drift. Does that ever happen to you? Sometimes it happens in a sermon, doesn't it? You can't even stay with me long enough to finish. Their minds began to drift and they were confused. They were perplexed. And when we're confused and perplexed long enough, our imaginations can get the best of us. And we'll begin to worry and doubt about our future. Well, what if he's not coming back? What if Jesus doesn't show up again? I know he did before, but what if he's letting me down this time? What if I can't do this that he's expecting of me by myself? Or what if my enemies get to me before Jesus does? What if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not smart enough? What if I'm not eloquent enough? Or what if I fall on my face in front of everybody? What if all of this was as the temptations would sing, just my imagination, right? What if it was all just my imagination? Running away with me. You know, you start thinking about that. Maybe I, maybe I just imagine that God said. Maybe I, I, I just made it up in my head that everything was going to be all right. Maybe I thought I was supposed to start my own business. Maybe I was supposed to step out on faith, but maybe it was just my imagination. Don't act like you don't do that. Even if you don't know the song, you know what it's like. Now, I know it didn't sound like it, but you know where I'm trying to get. So when Jesus had been gone too long, however too long is, because too long is a relative term, right? Because you know, somebody's away for a day, sometimes it's a blessing, but when somebody you really want to see, a day is too long. And when you're not missing them much, when they come back after a week, you're like, you back already? So whenever, however, Jesus had been gone too long, Peter decided to go with what he knew, to go back to fishing for fish. Because, see, that was his trade. He and his brother Simon, in fact, according to the Gospel of Luke, it was when Peter and his crew couldn't fish all night. See, this is a long time ago. See, there's two times that this happens. Back in Luke, back when he was first calling the disciples, when all of them got together and couldn't catch fish all night, Jesus showed up and he told them to go back out and try again. Then after that, Jesus said, I'm going to use your fishing talent in a new way. And he said, for now, you will become fishers of men. You will catch men, and I'll say women, 
because he was going after both of them. That's what the disciples being called was supposed to lead to, that they would become fishers that actually caught people and brought them to the Lord. That's what disciples do. You touch people, you help people, you catch people, and you don't bring them to your church. You bring them to God. If they join your church, hallelujah, but your job as a disciple is to bring people to God. Just like now, back then, a lot of the same disciples were there, so they should have known that. The word says that Peter had called his crew when they all came with him, Simon, James, and John, the, son, the sons of, De of Zebedee. So the same disciples that had been summoned for a higher calling earlier, when Peter said, I'm going fishing for fish, the rest of them said, well, we're going to go too. We ain't got nothing else to do. We're going to follow you. So here's one of the primary lessons, saints, if you haven't figured it out already. And even though they were out fishing all night and they caught nothing, it shouldn't have been surprising because that is not what Jesus had called them for. Brothers and sisters, once you have been called out of something, don't try to go back. There's a reason why you've been called out of your stuff, and it's always going to be something better than what you left behind. When God calls you out, stay out of it. Yet faced with an uncertain future, we have a habit of wanting to go with what is comfortable and familiar. Yet Jesus says you were called out of that bad relationship for a reason. Don't go back. He brought you out for a reason. Leave those folk alone who've been holding you down. You were delivered from drugs for a reason, not just to say that you were clean, but because he had a future for you that was going to take you somewhere that was going to bless you. You left that neighborhood and friends behind who were doing nothing for a reason because they weren't ever going to do anything but stay right where they were. But God called you out of that because he had better for you. You were called to go to college for a reason or to go into a profession for a reason, no matter how much of a struggle it is. You stop sleeping around with all of those men or women for a reason because God said, if you're going to hang with me, then you got to respect yourself the way I respect you. And don't let anybody else pull you down. He delivered you out of this stuff for a reason. He delivered you out of your bad childhood for a reason. There's a reason why the past is called the past because it's something that's supposed to be left behind. Everything that you came out of may not have been bad, but still God brought you out of it for a reason. Stop defaulting back to seasons, people, and situations that God has already brought you out of. Now, I know it's easier, but that's not what God has called you for. Somebody needs to know today that they, that, that they keep hitting rewind while God's trying to hit fast forward. Just because it's what you've always done doesn't make a difference. Just because it's comfortable doesn't mean it's okay. Or even if you're good at it doesn't mean you need to still do it. When God says it's time to move forward, then move forward. Don't let the weight, the W-A-I-T, play with your mind so much that you forget your objective. Don't let the fact that it hasn't happened the way you thought it was going to happen when it was supposed to happen, don't let the weight play with your mind. And if you're friends with someone who can influence you to go back and rethink and start doing what you were doing before you met Jesus, you're hanging around the wrong people. See, they should have said just the other day when Peter said, I'm, I'm going to go fishing. They should have said just the other day, Peter. Jesus blew the Holy Spirit on us. That's power and knowledge right there. We have everything that we need. If we put our minds together collectively and in prayer, no telling what we could accomplish. We don't need to go fishing. We need to do something that God has raised us to do for such a time as this. If you believe in Jesus and in the power of God, he should not have to show up every two seconds to get us to have faith and be encouraged that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. 
If you know the Lord at all, you will believe his word and move forward in confidence, knowing that the footsteps of the righteous are truly ordered by the Lord. He's not going to let you stumble too far. He might let you fall, but not too far. And his grace is sufficient for his power is made perfect in our weakness. So as you continue to talk about what you can't do, no, that's all right, because that's the stuff that God's going to cover. Do what you can do and let God take care of the rest. Stop trying to be God all by yourself and be the best you can do and then let God be God. I just came to tell somebody today that we've got to learn to move on in Jesus, whether we can see him or not. We've got to be able to serve him because he's already called and equipped us. It's already done. If you know who Jesus is and what God has done for us, then you know enough. You know enough. Remember, you know enough to know that all things are possible for God. And if you belong to God, which you do, if you have confessed with your mouth and you believe with your heart, then you are saved and God has a higher calling for you than anything that you could ever think of. So that's why he's brought you out. Stop staying in stuff, talking about, I can't get out of it. I can't change. I can't make a difference. God has already done it. He's already called you out of it. All you have to move. So do as Paul said and press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus in your own lives. Finally, you might just say, well, what does that look like? What does is, what is the high calling of God look like in my life? Well, it's, it's similar, yet it's unique for everybody. Now, we should all want to be like Jesus. That's the similar part. We're all called to be like Jesus. None of us get past that point. You, you, you want to be individual, but we all want to be like Jesus. But then there's the unique part. God wants to use each of our lives individually and our unique gifts and talents to glorify him. And everybody's got something different. Even if you do the same thing, you don't do it the same way. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a gift, and I don't care whatever it is, you can use it to glorify God. For Peter and his friends, they use their ability to catch fish, to translate into catching people. Jesus said, I can take that. This is how I do it. I'll take fishermen, and I'll show you how that concept can work to help other folks. He can take whatever it is that you have. Each of us has a talent, a gift, a position that we can use to bless others as well. Don't look at what somebody else has because that's not the gift for you. If he didn't give you the voice to sing, don't be mad about somebody who could. Maybe you can drum. And if you can't drum, don't worry about Sister Donna being able to drum. But maybe you can build something. And maybe you can't build something. Don't worry about that. Maybe you can teach. Maybe you can use your voice. Maybe you can cook. Maybe you can sew really well. Maybe your voice is just something people like to hear, take advice from you. Maybe, maybe you're an encourager. Whatever it is, God gave it to you to use to be able to bless people through him. Amen. Nothing, nothing, nothing that you do will be important until you learn to do everything to the glory of God. Not for the glory of your paycheck. Not for the glory of my review and whether or not I'm going to get a raise. Not for the glory of the, my power or position, but everything to the glory of God. Nothing that you do will be important until you learn to do everything to the glory of God. When you cook something for somebody, do it with love to the glory of God. When you visit somebody at the hospital and pray for them, do it because you're doing it to the glory of God. Stop walking around talking about what you don't have that God didn't give you like somebody else. Do whatever you can do to the glory of God. No matter what it is, God can use us in all kinds 
kinds of ways to do his work to touch people, to impact our families in positive ways, to save the environment, to make a difference in our neighborhoods and our communities, to turn our lives around so that somebody else can know that if God did it for us, he can do it for them. Sometimes your, your life, the, all the mistakes you made is the testimony that somebody else needs to know. Yeah, she fell down 500 times, but look at her today. Oh, yeah, he was one out on the streets, and nobody thought he was ever going to be anything. And look, God called him to preach. You never know who God might use. Some of you who got the worst testimonies out there are the ones that are the most blessed. Hasn't Jesus done enough before he has to show up again for us to live as the disciples that he has called us to be? If so, then don't keep going back, but move on. And don't worry, Jesus will show up just when you need him to. Can anybody say amen? amen. Yeah, say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody needed that word. I'm telling you, if you just think it applies in church, if you just think this is churchy religious stuff that we're doing just to be doing it, hoping you get in heaven one, right someday, you are missing the whole moment of your life and what God is trying to do in us every day. Amen. Every single day is an opportunity. Every single day you can have a miracle. Every single day you can impact somebody else. God never slowed down and never slows down. Jesus never said, I'm too busy to bless you. He blessed anybody he needed to whenever they needed it done. God is still in the blessing business and so is Jesus. So right now I just want to open the doors of the church. There might be somebody yet today who's been struggling. Somebody who keeps going back to the familiar. Somebody who keeps staying in their mess. Somebody who knows God is trying to deliver you, yet you keep going back. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are open. If there's anybody today who has yet to know who Jesus is, and now that you've heard it, you've got no excuse because faith comes through hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. So all you have to do is claim Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Say, I can love God, and I can live like Jesus, and I can accept, I can accept his grace and his mercy so that my sins can be washed away. That's all you have to do. So the doors of the church are open. If there's anybody who's not done that yet, we invite you to come forward at this time. The doors of the church are open. Just waiting, just waiting. Let Jesus have his way. Let the Holy Spirit fall afresh on us. I want you to pray right now. Maybe there's somebody who's not here in this building today. Somebody in your family, a friend, a neighbor, somebody that doesn't know Jesus. Lift them up right now. And ask God to just touch them right where they are. Everybody's got family, friends, somebody that needs to be prayed for so that they know they're not in this by themselves. The doors of the church are open. As the youth come in quietly, as the youth come in quietly, it might be one of them if they're paying attention that's getting called for today. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are open. We have three young people that are going to be coming in for confirmation classes. There might be somebody who needs confirmation. Somebody who's been away from the church that needs a rededication. Somebody that's looking for a church home. Somebody just needs help. We offer Christ. And for those who have already accepted that call. God is saying, what are you going to move forward into? What are you waiting for to follow me? What are you standing in the way of that's getting in the way of your breakthrough or what's standing in the way of you? 
All you have to do is remember that Jesus has already done it. He's already said it. He already showed it. Now all we have to do is believe it. The doors of the church are open. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we come thanking you and praising you right now for all that you've done and all that you are. That, Lord, even in the wait, even when things are not going the way that we expect, your plan is still in place. And you keep waiting for us to trust and believe in you. So, Lord, let us push past our doubts, push past our fears into the future that you have for each and every one of us. Don't let anything hold us back, Lord. Don't let fear or comfortability or complacency get in the way of your glorious divine future for us and for your church and for your churches and for this world. Use us for your ministry, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and let the church say amen. Brother Larry, would you find out what? Wait a minute. You all remember? I just as long as as long as he's there. Okay, you tell you tell bro, you tell brother Larry. Okay, okay, you tell brother Larry. It's all right. Okay, okay. Go ahead and sit down, brother Jonathan. It's all right. What did I tell you? The next time you saw Brother Jonathan, he was going to be right back to himself. Can anybody say amen? amen. He went out of here with the paramedics last week, go, but he's here in full Jonathan self this week. Amen. 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 Look at what God can do. I want to lift up Sandra March, who went to the hospital Thursday and made it back home from the hospital yesterday. So I just want to say amen to what God is doing in her and through her. I want to lift up the other prayer requests because we have to remember that if you're going to give it to God, you've got to let it go. So we lift up Bruce and Betty Johnson and their granddaughter Brianna and Brianna's mother in prayer all have health issues. Pray to surrender my worries to God and to remember God's love and grace for you. Amen. So, oh, wait a minute. Prayer request. Dear God, thank you for being the one that is always there for me and my family, and that answers my prayers, listens to my cries, and blesses me with your unconditional love. I surrender my worries to God. Somebody say, I surrender. I surrender. If you surrender your worries, don't pick them back up. Don't pick them back up. Even in the wait, don't pick them back up. And don't follow with your friends who want you to go worry with them. Don't pick them back up. When you lay your burdens down, the only way to get them again is for you to pick them back up. Remember God's love and grace for you. Prayers for Myra and son Anthony as they travel back from Virginia, from Virginia from seeing his dad for the first time in three years. Amen. Amen. Pray that was a nice visit, and again, encourage you all to reach out and write to him.
prayers for Raven Forest, Dana Love, and their families. Prayers for attorney Jay Carter that had his home going yesterday. He cared for his mom and dad dearly. Now God has called him home to be with them. Yes, I heard about that one. Didn't know him personally. I want to lift up Brother Gary Clark. He became an honorary deacon when he helped put the... Um, Help them put the pool out for the first time in 2020 or 2020. Yeah, 2020, I think. And uh, he recently had um, uh, rotator cuff surgery and a torn, uh, torn ligament. So we lift him up in his recovery and his sister, whose husband passed away on Wednesday or Thursday of last week. So we lift up the NORAD family. We pray safe travels for him and his family for that homegoing service. Um, prayers for Reverend Trudy Woods, who lost her sister. That homegoing service was last week. She's a dear sister in Christ. Prayers for Bishop Cox and the um, Parenthood Ministries of Reverend Gloria Cox that continue to lift us in prayer. The West Dayton Caravan Preachers and for the Clergy Community Coalition. Prayers for Jeffrey battling cancer in the name of Jesus. I would like to pray for the women in jail. All right. Amen. Absolutely. I'm going to add the men and women in jail praying for those that have been victims of gun violence that unfortunately we hear about almost every day now. Prayers that our, our um, political leaders will do the right thing to begin to start making and passing legislation to pull back some of these, some of these things out of people's hands and that people will start doing what they need to and stop um, shooting first and asking questions later. Thank God for the answering the prayers of the women of God. Prayed on my way, prayed on my, over my children in Africa. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We continue to lift up our youth, our youth to um, be brought up in the ways of the Lord. So watch how you walk because the youth watch us. And then sometimes I said we need to watch the youth because we need to learn something for ourselves as Sister Quanteria prepares to pray. Prayers for safe travels. I'm going to Virginia to see my son on Friday, Sister Deborah. Amen. Got you. Please pray for me and my family. Also, I have a court hearing coming up. Please pray for me. Amen. What did I say? I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Give it to God. Give it to God and trust him. Have we missed anyone? All right, then with that, let us go to God in prayer. God, our God, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we come thanking you for the reminder on today of surrender. God, as difficult as it is that we want to carry some of the things or we seem like we want to help you carry the things, God, but we, you are God all by yourself. God, we just ask that as you teach us to surrender, Lord, that it's not a, <clears throat> a hard thing, Lord, but it's an it's a easygoing thing in a partnership with you, God. As we lay all our burdens, our cares, our worries, our stressors, Lord, the things that weigh us down, God, Lord, you take all of our cares and our worries and our burdens, God, and allow our steps to be lighter. You carry all of our baggage, God. So all we have to do is surrender and keep surrendering and keep surrendering and giving those things over to you. It's a daily thing, God, and we surrender our lives, Lord. We surrender our agendas, Lord. We surrender all of the things, God. And, Lord, we get your peace. And, God, we know that we've been praying about peace. And, Lord, I pray that all of us are starting to feel it. And as we feel it, as we continue to believe it, God, yes. believing for, for more, for greater, and just more of you, God, in your presence. God, as we're learning more of you and as we're praying, God, and we're praying for each and every person in here, Lord, even names that were brought up today that we don't even know, God, but Lord, you're, those are your sons, those are your daughters, those are your children. And God, we are one body with you. We are your family, Lord. So we just pray God, for all of your children, we pray for all the churches, God, Lord, everyone that just surrenders their hearts, Lord, to you. 
And God, I just pray and just thank you, God, for just this day. I thank you, Lord, that those who felt heavy, Lord, and that were coming in dragging, God, and this and that and things that were going on, God, they came, Lord, just to get more of you, God. Yet one more day. Thank you, God, for one more day. Thank you for the breath in our lungs, Lord. Thank you for the pep in our step, Lord. Help us during this week, Lord. And as the word that went forth today, Lord, help us to pray about these things and not worry about these things. Lord, help us to take the word from today, Lord, and use it, apply it. Because, God, your word is living and ever true and ever present. So, God, we pray that we apply your word through this week in all of our troubles, Lord, our situations, God, with travels, with things of this world, with loss of loved one, Lord. I just pray for comfort and peace. That surpasses all understanding, God. We thank you. We ask for your covering. We ask for your blessing. We ask for your healing, God, because we know that only you can do that. And we'll be so careful to give you all the honor and glory because you deserve it. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to close the service, I also want to just lift up names that the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance, lifting up Sister Linda Jones and the loss of her grandson, continue to keep their family lifted, and lift up Sister Vicki Eason, um, who has recently also received a diagnosis of cancer, and so we lift her up, lift those who have continued um, to deal with um, sickness, depression, grief, pray for one another. That's why the Bible says pray without ceasing. There's always someone who needs prayer, so continue to keep each other lifted way past Sunday morning, throughout the week in your own prayer time. If you don't have it, set an alarm just to remind yourself to lift up not just your family, but other families, other people, and other struggles that have nothing to do with you because we're all tied to one, to one another. So there's no way that we can say that somebody suffering someplace else doesn't affect us because we're all part of the same body. You know, if my foot hurts, I can't, my hand can't say, well, it's okay, I don't feel it because I feel it. I feel it. No matter what happens, we have to feel when everybody's hurting. So let's continue to lift them up. We invite you to stand for our charge, benediction, and closing hymn. Pongamos nuestros pies en el camino del servicio y la reconciliación. Busquemos las diferentes maneras en que Dios ha decidido bendecirnos en nuestro diario caminar. Vayan con confianza de que Cristo camina con cada uno de ustedes en ese camino del diario vivir. Amén. Before I start, I would just like to add a prayer for Michael Love, that things work out for him on his job okay. So, okay. Set your foot on the path of service and reconciliation. Look for the many ways in which God has blessed your journey. Go in confidence that Christ walks with you each step of the way. Amen. Also, there will be a Christian Ed meeting following service. Give me five or ten minutes to greet everyone, and we'll meet in the conference room. In the meantime, Christ has brought us together, together in faith, together in hope, together in love. We have gathered together to be sent out again, sent out with the welcome message of God's love for us and for one another. We go forth together to be living testimonies of Christ's love, May the peace of Christ rest, rule, and abide upon your homes, your households, your families, and most of all, your hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go with God. <laughs>